Pizza. Oh, I'm sorry. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so each black hole is uh, surrounded by an uh, event horizon that acts as a one-way membrane, and uh, and that no object inside the surface can ever escape to the to the outside world. So in uh, in a classical theory, the black hole is a completely black body, acts as a infinite sink. Uh, however, in uh, if you treat the black holes in in quantum theory, the, this behaves as a thermodynamic system. Uh, it will have uh, finite temperature entropy, so the the scenario completely changes. Uh, and, and you can associate this uh, black hole with a entropy. So this is the famous Bekenstein Hawking entropy. Um, uh, the, the the work of Bekenstein and Hawking long back in 1974 and 75. Five. So, uh, so in the low curvature approximation, so so when we consider uh, only uh, terms up to two derivative in the action, then you can calculate this uh, Bekenstein Hawking entropy, uh, which will given by uh, basically the area of the event horizon. Uh, the n is the neutron. Uh, Newton's gravitational constant, and uh, there will be uh, there will be constant like h cross c e and uh, the Boltzmann constant here and there, and uh, we basically express it in natural units. So we have taken all of them to one. So uh, 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 as we know uh, that uh, for ordinary objects like uh, in any in, in our statistical physics, uh, the entropy of a system. Uh, it can always have a microscopic or a statistical interpretation. So you can fix uh, the macroscopic parameters uh, of a system, let's say the total electric charge uh, or uh, energy, and uh, then count the number of quantum states, we call them, or the microstates. Uh, for which like uh, each of these microstates has the same value of macroscopic parameters, and uh, you can uh, calculate the statistical entropy or microscopic entropy uh, as the logarithmic of uh, uh, all these uh, of the number of all such microstates having the same macroscopic parameter. So uh, the a natural question is like, uh, can we have a similar interpretation for the entropy of the black holes? Like, we have the entropy for this uh, black hole. Can we treat it as an ordinary object and have a statistical interpretation? So if you want to investigate uh, the statistical origin of the black hole entropy, you need a full quantum theory of gravity because uh, it's a gravitational object and you have to find out the, all the micro Microscopic states. So, uh, so you need a full quantum theory of gravity. And we don't have one yet. Uh, and uh, search of one such theory, I think, is an important area of research in theoretical physics. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a standing problem for some time now. And we don't have a complete uh, full quantum theory of gravity. So, uh, so any candidate uh, quantum uh, theory of gravity, let it be string theory or any any other quantum theory of gravity, uh, should provide a positive answer or a successful comparison between this macroscopic and uh, microscopic prediction of a black hole entropy. And so in any theory, you start with a theory and you calculate the macroscopic entropy and the microscopic entropy, and there should be a successful comparison. And uh, we try to work in uh, in string theory, so we prefer to do this investigation in string theory. It's because uh, one of the success of string theory is an uh, explanation of the Bekenstein Hawking entropy. Of course, for a special class of uh, uh, supersymmetric extremal black holes uh, by by Schrominger and Bhappa in 1996. Uh, in terms of the microscopic quantum states. So you, uh, uh, so what do we do? We identify some supersymmetric black holes uh, with uh, charges uh, Q and P and uh, calculate the Bekenstein and Hawking entropy. So that will be the macroscopic entropy in the left-hand side. Then uh, you calculate the corresponding quantum states in uh, string theory, which should carry uh, the same set of uh, charges Q and P. So this can be states with uh, the fundamental strings. It can be states with uh, the debris. 
uh, it can also include the Kaluza Klein monopoles, and you calculate all the states. Fine, carrying the same set of uh, charges, you take the logarithmic of that, and uh, that will basically um, give you the microscopic entropy uh, 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 for the corresponding um, corresponding statistical picture. And uh, 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 and in uh, Strominger, in the work of Strominger and Bhappa, we found a, a very good agreement between these uh, two calculations in string theory. And uh, this, I will say, as a remarkable agreement that uh, it basically, uh, you can, as you can see, it can it relates a geometric quantity in uh, uh, in the black hole space time to a counting problem that does not have any so the counting problem that you are doing in string theory does not have any direct reference to the black holes we only know about the uh, the states having the same set of charges however so this is the agreement is remarkable but uh, then this opens up uh, many new questions uh, the first question sorry the first question is like uh, if you see both sides of the formula even the bekenstein hawking formula but he said that in the low curvature approximation. So we basically kept the charges are large. So both sides of those formulas are computed in the, in the large charge approximation. So in the macroscopic side, you also take the large charge approximation so that you can use some asymptotic formula to calculate this uh, D, the, the degeneration number. So, uh, so on the on the black hole side, uh, it, it this uh, approximation is needed so that our curvature uh, the uh, curvature at the horizon is small, so we can keep only the second derivative terms and uh, and ignore the higher derivative terms in the action. So on the um, uh, uh, so the first question is that uh, does the agreement between this microscopic and the macroscopic results for the black hole entropy in string theory? hold beyond this large charge or large size limit fine so if you want to say so let's say this is the leading order calculation on both the sides and uh, and uh, we need tools for more accurate computation so that we get correction terms on both the sides macroscopic and microscopic on both the sides and then only we can tell something concretely about uh, uh, about this agreement or about the explanation. So um, one of the way to resolve the ambiguities is to uh, study as many as explicit examples, like explicit uh, examples of different kinds of black holes, where one could uh, compute the corrections to the uh, to both the statistical entropy and the black hole entropy and uh, we can mo make more precise formulation of the relation between these two entropies Fine. so we basically need corrections on both the sides microscopic and macroscopic ma macroscopic and uh, works in string theory is going on in on both the sides so as you can see this is a uh, this is a vast program it's, uh, to achieve the goal like to make a precise formulation between these relationships um the goal is uh, too far away and uh, we can um, uh, so in that context you can treat our works like uh, some additional examples in the literature so we contribute to this vast program is very little like one one of the example right? where we try to calculate the corrections to to the black hole entropy and we basically do the calculation in the macroscopic side. So our goal is to study the corrections to the Bekenstein Hawking entropy. So it's again making smaller our, or narrower our, uh, our area that we are only concentrated on the macroscopic side. Like we, we study the corrections to the Bekenstein Hawking entropy formula. But the microscopic is, is another. So uh, the Bekenstein Hawking entropy gives the leading order contribution. And uh, and we try to calculate uh, uh, in string theory that different kinds of corrections. Again, if you want to summarize what kind of uh, different uh, corrections that one can have uh, in string theory, so there can be some higher derivative correction that that are even classical. So classical, you if you take the alpha prime uh, uh, the string coupling, the stringy corrections. 
So there will be higher derivative corrections to Bekenstein Hawking formula. And then uh, there can be quantum fluctuations, right? So around the background, then can, can be fluctuations of the fields and uh, that will give us the quantum corrections or the GS corrections that we call. So the higher derivative corrections are captured by Wall's modification of the Bekenstein Hawking formula. And, uh, and again, uh, so my, uh, our work is narrowed to the quantum correction. So we want to address the effect of quantum corrections on the black hole entropy. So we are not talking about the higher derivative corrections. That is again, another problem. Uh, then in quantum corrections, so if you look at the most general quantum corrected uh, black hole entropy formula, uh, you can write it as a power series in the inverse powers of its horizon. And uh, if you see the leading order, uh, so that will be the logarithmic ones. Right. So the first term that, that I have highlighted uh, is like, so, so this is the Bekenstein Hawking formula. So um, as you can see that if you have steel in the large charge limit or the large size limit for the large black holes, macroscopically large black holes, uh, the first term is proportional to logarithmic of area. Right. So uh, even for the for the macroscopically large black holes, uh, large in the sense that the area is uh, is larger uh, from the Planck scale in the units of Planck scale, then uh, this will be the leading term. For the smaller uh, smaller black holes, uh, the power law will dominate. Right. So still in the large charge limit, we can uh, calculate these quantum corrections. This will be the dominant the logarithmic corrections will be the dominant correction for macroscopically large black holes. So we are still in the large charge limit. So in the, uh, 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 you can see there is a uh, pre-factor C and, uh, and it's proportional to the logarithmic, uh, logarithmic of the area. On the macroscopic side, uh, these corrections uh, arise only from the one loop contribution to the black hole partition function. So that, that, is, a, uh, that is one of the advantages. It's because that uh, you can calculate it completely or determine it purely from the knowledge of the low energy data. Right? So these are insensitive to the spectrum of the massive fields or higher derivative correction. You can only concentrate on the low energy data. So these corrections arise, that's why we say it is spatial or we are much more interested in that because these arise only from the loops of massless fields. So there is a computational, I think, completeness. Right? You can compute it, you can determine it. You don't worry about the, uh, 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 the, the spectrum of the massive fields. So the logarithmic correction, they only uh, arise from the loops of the massless fields. And again, from the loop momentum integration, where the loop momenta is uh, smaller than the Planck scale. So there is a UV cut off. And you can see that these corrections exist in any generic theory of gravity. So in that sense, it will be universal. On the other sense, they are not universal because they depend on the kind of massless fields the theory has. So I, I will say it from the, the, the formula that you, you can see that is a two factor C and logarithmic. So for, for in any generic theory, this will be log in terms of log of the area. So we call it as logarithmic correction. So this this term will be there. It is proportional to the log logarithmic correction always. However, this coefficient C, the pre-factor C, is different for each of the theory, for each different black holes. So they are not universal in that sense because they depend on the kind of massless fields that the theory has or even the how the massless fields are coupled to the background, how they are interacting with each other. Your, this C factor will be different for each of them. So once you compute these log corrections from the low energy data, they will provide a, a testing ground uh, for any proposed ultraviolet completion of the gravity. Or in other words, for the, for the description of the black holes in the, uh, in the microscopic side. So they serve as an infrared laboratory to test the UV complete spectrum theory of the gravity. So we we basically uh, uh, contribute in that way that uh, that this uh, uh, 
uh, our our result puts a strong constraint on the possible microscopic explanation of the of the this logarithmic corrections the uh, next question is like like uh, if i'm clear that why i am interested on the log corrections uh, the next question is how one can compute this logarithmic correction so the next uh, part of my talk is planned accordingly so we are done with the if the my motivations are clear that why i am i'm interested in the logarithmic correction uh, in the next section i will basically describe that how we can compute this logarithmic correction so we call it as a manual manual for calculating the calculating this log corrections to the entropy of black holes it can be extremal black hole non extremal black hole uh, it can be supersymmetric it can be non supersymmetric so we include uh, basically the 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 approach is uh, approach is valid for all of them fine and uh, we question. use uh, uh, hello yeah yeah so uh, i have two questions actually so this log term that you ap that appeared in the formula mm -hmm. the, is this uh, uh, of, uh, is this only in d equal to 4 no you can calculate it in any d no the, um, i mean if i say we are doing uh, black holes in hard dimension i would still yes. expect the first uh, correction to be a log yeah term? You, you still expect the first first corrections there are many explicit examples if you'll see uh, sense work uh, they have uh, rotating black holes in five dimension then um, yeah so i think some kaluzak line black holes in some other dimension so they are valid they are valid in order our work is purely in in d equal to 4 as i said the c term the pre factor c yes. so you will get a contribution for means for different dimensions this c will be different but you will, you can expect the log correction in in different dimension at okay. least i will say the that there exist examples where this log corrections has been calculated for higher dimensional black holes okay okay i have a second question so this c, yes. i have a question regarding this c this c, uh, constant c that seems to appear in the formula mm -hmm. so explicitly what what would you expect this to be a function of, of the charge and the mass of the black hole yeah, and I, the, I, i mean if you are looking at supersymmetric solutions uh, maybe the maybe yeah i will say as i said it is not a constant it's a pre factor right and uh, uh, you will see in my talks that how how it so for some black holes it's so if you say uh, if my c is independent of the black hole parameters fine right for right. some black holes it happens yes. then i will say that these corrections are universal right completely universal and right. the, at at times the c is dependent on the black hole parameters okay fine so uh, for the examples that has already calculated and the works that i have done i don't have a perfect uh, uh, like um, as you can say a conclusion that uh, i i cannot make a concluding remark that for which cases uh, like for supersymmetric it will be like this or for non supersymmetric so for each black hole behaves differently so sometimes we get this c in terms of the uh, the black hole parameters and sometimes it is completely independent okay okay thank you and so yeah thank you should i proceed it's okay yeah uh -huh. Uh, uh so 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 we will uh, uh, so we we do this computation like uh, we use the heat kernel method and uh, and and um, mostly the its expansion uh, in proper time and uh, the expansion of the heat trace and we calculate the coefficient so that are the ones the coefficient called silly do it coefficients uh, they basically are the ingredients to compute this logarithmic correction to the to the entropy of black holes so uh, in the next section i will basically uh, focus on that uh, then we will calculate the logarithmic correction like like as i said my focus will be on our recent work so in our recent work we calculated the logarithmic entropy corrections uh, for the extremal and non extremal uh, von neumann family of black holes uh, in a generalized uh, einstein maxwell theory so in the last two sections so i will uh, discuss about the the our results on the uh, on the extremal and non extremal black holes and then we will uh, conclude uh, with our uh, with the discussions of uh, what are what are the results we have up to now 
yeah, I would like to take some questions uh, from the first part if, if anyone has more questions. Yeah, I have a small question. Yes. Uh, are you referring or mainly focus on asymptotically flat black holes only? Or are you also considering the possibility of asymptotically ADS black holes falling into this type of discussion? Okay, so when we talk about uh, the black hole geometry, like uh, uh, we, we basically calculated on the Corneman family, as you'll see in the extreme limit, uh, uh, it's like um, uh, the near horizon geometry is ADS to times a uh, compact space. So uh, we don't use the data that it will, it will be asymptotically flat or, or not. So what we use is the either the full geometry or the, or the near horizon geometry. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Fine. So as I said, um, the the method that we used to calculate uh, or the or the, the the program started to compute this uh, um, this log corrections uh, with the work of Sen et al. in two thousand eight. Uh, like the, the introduction of this Euclidean gravity approach. So uh, you can use this Euclidean gravity approach for, uh, for both the both type of black holes, like extremal and non-extremal. The treatment is a bit different. Like for the extremal black hole, we additionally use the, um, the rules of ADS to safety correspondence. And since there is a presence of ADS2 factor in the near horizon geometry of the black holes, uh, you can use that. So you use the quantum entropy function formalism. Right? So for the extremal black holes, we use the quantum entropy function formalism and both, them, both of them like the Euclidean gravity approach and quantum entropy function formalism is well established by now. The procedure does not, as I, as I mentioned earlier, this procedure uh, does not rely on supersymmetry. So this can be carried out for any black holes, even for the non-supersymmetric ones. And in our work, we have basically done it for the non-supersymmetric ones. So we don't use the, uh, it doesn't rely on the supersymmetry. However, this requires the computing of the heat kernel, more precisely like it's the expansion coefficient of the, of the kinetic operator of the massless fields in the black, black hole background. So I'll just outline the main features or, or the main steps that we use uh, in this approach that how you can compute the logarithmic correction from the coefficients. So let's start with the path integral. Uh, and since our work is in four dimensions, so I'll basically consider, um, concentrate on d equal to four. So let's consider the path integral describing a four dimensional Euclidean gravity theory. So uh, uh, the, the um, uh, so, so the S is basically the Euclidean, Euclidean ionized action. Then we have a set of, you can have a set of fields. So this can be in the Einstein-Maxwell theory. This will be a vector field in the, if you have some additional coupling, then there can be scalars, then can be spin half fields. So J is the set of uh, all fields other than the metric, right? So I keep metric uh, outside. So G psi, so G will be the metric describing the, the space-time geometry. And uh, as I said, we, we are interested in the quantum correction. So we fluctuate the metric around any classical solution. So the classical background, the one that, that, will, uh, that will follow or that will, that will be a solution to Einstein-Maxwell equation. So Einstein equations will be G bar and J uh, bar. So these are the background. And then we fluctuate it uh, around the background, right? And let's calculate the quadratic fluctuator action. So in the fluctuation, let's, uh, let's just compute the quadratic part because it's, uh, I'm concentrating on the one loop. So the quadratic fluctuated action. So that will be, uh, let me write it in a schematic form. So my J tilde is uh, J M tilde is uh, the complete set. It's a G tilde, which is uh, the uh, fluctuations in the uh, in the metric and uh, uh, and J tilde are any other fields that are there. And uh, then this lambda will be a, in general a differential operator that uh, that controls the quadratic fluctuation. 
Of course, when you will do it for a theory, your lambda, you, you may, not this, may not get this schematic form. However, when you want to apply the heat kernel method, you have to bring it to this form. Right? So lambda is like the differential operator that controls the quadratic fluctuation. So you have to reorder, restructure it. And then, uh, basically, in terms of the heat kernel of the operator, like e to the power minus s lambda, you can write down the one loop effective action, uh, e to the power minus w, or the one loop uh, partition function. Uh, and that you can write as uh, the integration. So, x lambda will be the ultraviolet cutoff, uh, uh, and you have to uh, calculate the trace of this. Uh, this heat kernel of the operator e to the power minus s lambda. So lambda being the, so, so this is called the heat trace. And uh, since I'm doing it in general, in general for a bosonic field or a fermionic field. So this is my general manual. So to take care of both the signatures, like uh, it will be one over determinant of lambda root over or one over or just determinant of lambda uh, root over. So I, I just put a chi parameter here. So that is plus for the bosons and minus for the bromine. So that uh, 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 so 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 I can write it in a general form. And then uh, what we do in the the uh, heat kernel method or, or, or the solidity expansion is that you expand the effective action perturbatively uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, uh, in the parameter pro, pro of the proper time is uh, that is called the heat kernel parameter and uh, that tending to zero, you can perturbatively expand the uh, effective action. Right? So I have written down the expansion and as you can see, the S independent terms, because there is a DS by S, so the S independent term in the expansion, that is basically the A4X uh, will um, uh, contribute to the log correction, because there is a DS by S, so that will give you a logarithmic of S, and S is the scale parameter, you can scale it to one over L square, S by one over L square, and that will give you the terms proportional to the log corrections the, in, the, in, the, in the effective action. Basically, the, S, the A4X term will give you the logarithmic correction. Sorry, why, uh, why do I not have a one by S to the power four or, uh, or more severe pole in this expansion? Yeah. Uh, I'm saying. Okay, <laughs> sorry, sorry. So I have uh, no a nice question, and I I try to explain it because you asked me here. Uh, the first thing is that in the expansion it is like uh, s to the power k and a k kind of thing. So you basically get all powers of s, but there is a one over a square outside. In the calculation, you will see in the computation there will be a one over a square. So I take into account uh, inside. So my a zero. Uh, which would be s to the power zero that that comes with one over s square that's why my a4 is and you can also have the odd like a3 uh, means i have i have omitted a3 a5 i don't have the odd terms it's because i'm applying uh, applying the expansion to um, a theory without a boundary fine it's like i'm applying so my main concern is uh, it's a uh, to apply it to the black holes. So that's why if you consider it uh, with the boundary terms, then of course there will be the terms like A3. There will be higher order terms, but um, like, like, like the dots. So since I'm, I'm only concentrating on, on, on the log corrections, I stop here with the S independent. Is it clear? Yeah, maybe same question to Ogunivo. Yeah, I, I also didn't understand. So it starts from one of S square. So uh, uh, how do you know that it starts from one of the S scale? Uh, is there no more singular uh, uh, terms like one of S fours? See, uh, the, uh, when you say, I am saying it, you expand uh, perturbatively. So it's, it's a series expansion. So it will be A zero S to the power zero. Fine, it's an expansion in S. So it will be a zero s to the power zero plus a one s to the power one and so on. Right. However, outside that factor, because there are two integrations, it's ds by s. You will see that. So so uh, uh, yeah. So I thought it's a standard expansion. So I, I I didn't put all the details. So there is a one over s square outside. 
So I have just put this one over a square inside the expansion. So my first term itself have one over a square. So the second term will be one over s. The third term will be one over, so it is s to the power n minus two. Get it? Because it is one over s square outside. So that will be one over, uh, so, so the series will start from s to the power n minus two, a right. two n. Yeah. So it's like uh, always two factors less. Okay. okay. Fine. So the series, if you want to write, it will be n equal to zero to infinity, s to the power n minus two, a two n. Right. In principle, you can have a to n plus one terms in the series, but I am avoiding that because I want to consider it for a uh, for for a theory uh, without uh, without boundary. Fine. So my a to n plus one terms will be zero. Fine. So if you use the Euclidean gravity approach, so you can calculate this one loop for corrections. So that will be evaluating this uh, W only for the massless fluctuations in the black hole background. So as you see in the central formula, we are uh, we have to only calculate uh, the A for X in the expansion because that will contribute to the logarithmic correction, the S independent term in the, in the series. So uh, the, your first job is to evaluate a for x, and then you have to integrate it around the appropriate part of the black hole geometry. So I just keep it the integration uh, open here because for the extremal, as I said, uh, you have to use the quantum entropy function formalism, and for the non-extremal, your tip, your treatment is different. So uh, so this. Up to this, the Euclidean gravity approach, it is uh, uh, both the treatments are same. However, the integration, as I said, you have to do it uh, appropriately, uh, like the appropriate of the black hole geometry. For the extremal, it will give you the, uh, it's on the near horizon, and, and for the non extremal, you have to do it on the full geometry. I'll come back to it. One thing in the, in the heat trace expansion, as I said, it is trace of e to the power minus s lambda that is uh, so it's it can be written as sum over i e to the power minus lambda i si so lambda i's will be like the eigen values of the uh, uh, of this uh, operator lambda so the one thing you cannot take care in this uh, integration that uh, that if you have some of the eigen values uh, they are zero. So there can be some, some modes or eigenfunctions of the operator lambda that are having zero eigenvalues. So for zero modes, uh, even the effective action cannot sustain its form inside the heat kernel method. So you have to take care of the, of the zero modes uh, separately. So there is a way you can remove the zero modes from the heat kernel in the beginning and again substitute them back via some symmetric group calculations uh, and uh, and th there is a well established computation like uh, like you can count that uh, the, uh, the contribution for the for the zero mode so you can say that we, you obtain the revised one loop effective action as uh, as a contribution from the non zero mode and then there is a zero mode contribution, which basically is proportional to the uh, the square of the length scale of the background metric. And uh, so, since it is square of the background, of, uh, like square of the length scale, so it's basically like uh, like the horizon area. So, uh, uh, so the zero modes again contribute to the to the logarithmic correction, but you can have to calculate it from a from separately, like you have to treat it separately. So there is a well-established method to take, take into account their contributions. So you have to calculate the number of uh, zero modes for any particular fluctuations. So we will give you a general formula for that. And, uh, and uh, as I said, that, uh, that, uh, that can depend on the space-time dimension D. 
so 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 this there is a constant number beta chi that will be depend on the on the it is related to individual fluctuation and also to the space time dimension d you have to calculate it and then uh, i have put the chi here because that will take care of the fermionic or bosonic fluctuations um and you can say that this is the revised form of the one loop effective action that will help us to compute this uh, uh this log corrections so i can write down the revised one loop effective action in this uh, compact uh, formula and i i call like uh, the considering only the terms of logarithmic of a h where a h is also as i said the square of the background length scale so the uh, I, I can write it in the compact uh, uh, working formula like uh, my c the prefactor c has uh, two parts one is uh, coming from the non zero modes of the of the uh, kinetic operator and i call it as uh, the local contribution so my c local is basically a integration over the appropriate black hole geometry of the a4 term uh, from the or the a4 coefficient and uh, there is a zero mode contribution so that i call as czm czm so this is just writing the above formula in this compact form so my cjdm is uh, basically a counting counting of this uh, number that uh, that for a specific black hole depending on what are the matter fields or what are the fluctuations uh, present this number will be different so let's uh, talk about the zero mode first because we don't have to do uh, means so uh, there is a calculation that how you can do different groups calculate it however we follow a compact formula that is uh, given by larsen you can say that uh, the larsen and et al so uh, you can say that uh, it is a empirical formula but uh, it's uh, it's basically written on the on the basis of all the available zero mode data fine like in the literature they found all the uh, available zero mode data for different kind of fields uh, for different kind of theories and then uh, uh, he has written down this uh, uh, this uh, uh, formula and that uh, basically matches to all all the data that is available so we uh, in our work uh, use this formula to calculate the the uh, zero mode contribution so that you can write it as uh, minus 3 uh, plus k k is 3 for rotating black holes so it's like a rotational symmetry and uh, zero otherwise uh, then uh, this n c uh, for the supersymmetric uh, black holes it's uh, it, it will be 4 for the bps black holes and zero for um, any other one like non supersymmetric ones and all so that 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 value will be zero and the third term is uh, is uh, taking care of either you are using it for the extremal black holes or non extremal black holes so this delta will be one for the non extremal black holes and uh, zero for the extremal black holes so this l and uh, logarithmic h by z n part is universal but uh, but uh, you can see that the c Uh, which is c local for c z and that is our uh, in general geometric so for different black holes because this a four term the coefficient that uh, that you will see that uh, we will evaluate uh, can depend on the black hole parameters so if in cases it is completely independent of the black hole parameters then uh, the uh, the entropy correction or the log correction is fully universal so let's come back to the uh, the local contributions uh, this c local as i said this is now up to that it's euclidean gravity approach and it's uh, completely common for extremal and uh, non extremal so for the extremal ones uh, we use the sense quantum entropy function formalism 
right? So that requires the, uh, so, so it's basically you take the near horizon geometry. So the, uh, the near horizon geometry is structured into ADS2 cross uh, K, and then you use the formalism. Uh, so, so that basically the C local part basically gives you uh, or ask you to do the integration over the near horizon geometry. So that you can, uh, the, uh, the partition function is, uh, is basically mapped to, to the horizon degeneracy. So the C local part, for the, to, to, so, so I'll just put the summarizing points like, uh, uh, so if you apply the quantum entropy function formalism for the extremal black holes, this integration to compute the local part of the extremal black holes. So you have to compute it or, or integrate it over the near horizon geometry, only over the near horizon geometry. On the other hand, in the non-extremal black hole, in the case of non-extremal black hole, so the treatment is different. You consider a bigger system like the black hole uh, in equilibrium with a thermal gas. You compute uh, the log correction for the total system. And then, uh, uh, so, so basically you, you calculate this for two different uh, systems. The two black holes considered in two different systems are, uh, are related by a scaling. And then uh, you subtract and uh, get back uh, uh, the contribution for the non-extremal black hole. So the treatment is completely different. So I'm giving you the reference that where, uh, where this uh, is done nicely, or you can refer it. Uh, however, I will take out uh, the final uh, result for the year paper that if you want to calculate uh, the, the local contribution for the non-extremal black hole, you have to do this integration over full geometry, over the full geometry. Then it will give you the correct answer for the local contribution. Right? So this comes out to that you have to integrate over the full geometry. So this... Uh, uh, as I said, these are both the approaches, say the Euclidean gravity approach, the approach to treat the extremal ones, the quantum entropy function formalism, or the non-extremal ones, they are all well established. So, uh, so I just try to summarize it or write down the, the, the important points. So the next okay. question nice basically, uh, just a minute, let me finish this slide and then, then I will, I'll go back. Mm, so, the, so, so, uh, so the whole program or whole aim to compute this log correction uh, is to uh, now boil down to, uh, to basically to compute the Seeley-Dewitt coefficients, the A4 for any theory, right? Because if you know A4 for that theory or for that particular black hole, then you can compute uh, the log correction, basically the local part. Anyway, the, the, the zero mode contribution is a counting problem and you have a formula for that. So the only thing that you want, if you want to calculate the logarithmic correction for a particular black hole or for a particular theory, then you have to compute, uh, you should know how to compute this silly do it coefficient, A4 for the theory. Fine? Okay, your question, please. Yeah, so for extreme black hole, you're considering near horizon geometry. And I think yes. I can understand it as you are computing molecular entropy, correction of entropy. Mm -hmm. And then for non-extremal black hole, we are considering full geometry. Yes. And uh, what are you computing here? Is it entropy or free energy? You are computing entropy. So are you computing just uh, some uh, correction to the onshore action? Is it? Yeah. As I said, you will you will basically calculate it. You consider two different systems. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, in fact, we can have a de detailed discussion once you have a look to the paper that I have given. The treatment is very special. The non-extremal black holes are very tricky to handle. So it's mm -hmm. like uh, it's a difference. You calculate the uh, this for the, the some quantity for the first uh, system and then for the second system you would uh, and they are related by a scale scale and then you basically make the difference that basically again gives you back the w the effective action so so mm -hmm. 
yeah, uh, I will just request you to have a look on, on this paper, even in our paper in one of the appendix, uh, like the, the paper I referred, like on my talk, in the appendix, mm -hmm. we have summarized the, uh, summarized the whole theory, whole text, okay. like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah please yeah. go on, yeah, we can talk again. Okay, yeah. we can talk later. Yeah. yeah, any other question? Yeah, I don't know. I have not reached uh, half of my talk. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, if not, I will. I'll proceed. Yeah. Okay. So, actually, you have. Uh, yes. Uh, ten minutes. I have completed but, nearly forty-five minutes. I think. Oh uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You spent yeah. forty-five. Oh, it's fine. Minutes. So if if things are clear, I will be happy because uh, the anyway the computation part is uh, tricky. So so you have to do it by hand. But but then uh, uh, like the uh, the concept should be clear. That's what we are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can show yeah. us. Some, so yeah. so yeah. the next uh, bigger task, I will say, the tedious task for any of the theory to compute this coefficient because uh, once you know the coefficient then it's a kind of a integration and you can calculate the log correction but the hectic task is to how you will calculate this coefficient therefore there are different methods like uh, even in the heat kernel there are a perturbative expansion method you have eigen function expansion method then uh, group theoretic approach so many groups they follow different uh, methods but uh, most of these approaches, as I said, uh, this is a bit of hectic task. So you have to assume, you have to assume few things and then uh, put some constant. So many of these approaches are either background geometry dependent, like it is only calculated for a particular black hole. You can use this method. Uh, sometimes it is model dependent model dependent and uh, it's it's basically in, in all the cases these are associated with some complex computation like the one uh, let's talk about for example the eigen function expansion method uh, because uh, if you will see the original work of sen and uh, and few of the following works um, they these coefficients are evaluated for various fields by finding the eigen function and eigen values of the kinetic operator in the background near horizon geometry fine so you will see these works are always um, restricted to the rison nostrum extremal or non extremal rison nostrum black holes it's because because rison nostrum in the uh, as i said that you have to talk uh, think about the eigen functions or eigen values in the background near horizon geometry so if you talk about the rison nostrum black hole the background near horizon geometry in uh, in four dimension is just a ds2 cross s2 it's simple so uh, working down the eigen functions or eigen values uh, will be a bit easier so this uh, uh, you just move to the core black holes so it's the ads2 cross slash s2 fine so it's a slash uh, sphere to sphere so then uh, it's a difficult tax so it's a in general a difficult tax if you don't have a rotational symmetry uh, for the particular background, then this eigenfunction method is, uh, is very difficult to work out. So you have to first calculate all the eigenfunctions of that particular operator. Like if you have a scalar field, you have to think about those eigenfunctions. If you have a vector field, different set of eigenfunctions and so on. So, uh, and there comes um, our method that we follow a more general method that is following the heat kernel expansion manual uh, basically given by Vasilevic in 2003. So this is the most general method or the direct method, I would say, that we can do this calculation for different fields on any arbitrary background field. So we could calculate it for the core Neumann, for the core, for the Ryzen Nostrum, for everything at one go. I so we can use this method for any arbitrary background field configuration. So we, we don't have stick to any background, particular background field configuration. And moreover, we express this coefficient in terms of the local invariance, obtained from the background metric or the Riemannian tensor or the Ricci tensor 
or um, the gas field and their covariant derivatives. So we usually express these coefficients in the local invariants. Right? So that is another advantage of our results. So we use this uh, very general method. Of course, it's a tedious task, uh, but if you can do a systematic computation, you can, uh, you can achieve about your results. So uh, the, the first one, like um, as I will say that uh, I, I, I just plan to show one of the explicit calculation that how you will calculate for A4 just for simple einstein Maxwell theory. Fine. Then you can generalize it to by by other couplings. So the gen, uh, so here I present the general approach for calculating the silly duet coefficients. And this platform is not not just new to the this paper. This we have done in our uh, earlier paper in two thousand twelve. We started this approach in um, uh, in two thousand twelve with the general the like uh, like we compute the log corrections to the core black holes or core Neumann black holes in d equal to four. So you start with restructuring the quadratic action, lambda, such that lambda becomes Laplace type, right? So if you remember my, my field, the set of fields are I and I n. So lambda in general will have some uh, double derivative terms, uh, some, some linear terms in the uh, 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 derivative operator, and there will be uh, 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 some terms uh, with uh, only the fields. So D rho is the ordinary covariant derivative phi in the background with the background metric. So uh, uh, forming the Laplacian of the del rho del rho type. And then this I is the identity operator in the field space. It's not just, just the identity operator in, in the four dimensional space. It's the identity operator in the field space. Then uh, omega rho and P, uh, all of them are matrices induced from the background metric and fields. And we compare this uh, action to a schematic, uh, to a new and generalized form, so that we can calculate these coefficients easily. So my new schematic or, or the new form to apply heat kernel method is, uh, is, is with a new covariant derivative. So that is basically um, written as the del rho plus omega rho. Omega rho is the connection. And, uh, and, uh, and capital omega rho sigma gives you the curvature of this covariant derivative. Fine. So this, uh, once you write down this, uh, compare this uh, lambda in this form, you can identify the matrices uh, E and uh, I, and then, um, you follow Vasilevich's uh, manual, and uh, once you identify the matrices E and omega, uh, then uh, you have to base. You can basically write down these coefficients uh, um, as a trace of these matrices. Right. So the trace is taken over all the field indices. So the trace here is a field space calculation. So you have to cal calculate this space over all the field indices, all the fields present in, the, in, in your theory. However, you can, you can uh, uh, it's like, like, like the R mean, you know, these are the Riemannian, Ricci or uh, Ricci tensor or the Ricci scalar uh, respectively to the curvature tensor and scalar corresponding to the, to the background metric. Right? So you can basically give, uh, write down the answer in the local invariance of the, of the background metric. So the main is job is there? to, uh, uh, yeah, sorry. What is chi there? Okay, uh, here. So uh, as, I, uh, yeah, as I said in the beginning that uh, I'm writing the manual in a general form for bosons and fermions. So you have to, I, I have put this chi here. So if it, it will be plus one for, if you are considering a bosonic field, it's a minus one if you are considering a fermionic field. Oh, I see, thanks. So um, uh, as I said, if you are considering a bosonic field, it's easier because uh, when you write down the quadratic fluctuated action, it's already Laplace type. It's already a second order equation, fine. However, if you consider the quadratic fluctuations for the fermions, if you have a fermionic field, then they are always governed by a first order uh, differential operator, fine, in the form del slash, uh, so uh, xi m xi m. 
So this can be any formula like a spin half or a Rorita Schwinger field, but it is always a fast operator. So to apply the heat kernel method or the heat kernel manual, we need a Laplace type operator. So we have to in 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 the uh, so so we have to make a special treatment for the fermionic fluctuations. So you can use the Hermitian conjugate uh, of of the kinetic operator and then co calculate uh, the corresponding Laplace type operator. Compute or apply the heat kernel method, and while you are taking the contribution, if you use this formula for the one loop effective action, so it, there will be a extra half factor. So it's just like square root, and it's uh, you are taking the logarithmic or determinant of uh, the operator, and uh, so so there will be an half factor. Fine. So for the fermionic fluctuations. You have to basically uh, you you consider the the quadratic fluctuation, take uh, the first order operator and then square it, make a Laplace type operator, and then uh, uh, then calculate its contribution and and so 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 basically you will have a half factor outside. Again, if you consider a complex Dirac spinner, so there are two degrees of freedom, so this additional half factor will be compensated. So, and, and if you are considering a real Maran spinner, then you can keep this half factor. So, uh, what I will say that uh, um, if you consider the one loop effective action, uh, that half factor you can take exclusively uh, inside the value of the sky. So, since I'm writing it as a general manual, you can uh, say that uh, uh, for fermions, it is uh, for Dirac spinners I can put a minus one and for my arena it's, it's a minus half so it will take in care by the sky value so so we, I did define the values of chi but we are talking about plus one or minus one for the fermions and bosons then for Dirac and my arena you can write it as a minus one and minus half explicitly so that you forget about the treatment the treatment is same for them and you, you can put just uh, if you are considering a Marana spinner at the end for the chi value you just put a minus half. Fine. So um, in principle, I'm I'm uh, I'm completing my time now. Uh, so the next is like uh, I wanted to show my results in in the uh, for the corner and family of black holes in the uh, in the generalized electromagnetic theory. So uh, what should I I mean so, should I show the results or uh, go to the conclusion directly? Well, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can spend. I think you can spend like, like 10 minutes more. Okay, yeah, then, so yeah. uh, thanks. Thanks for the extra time. Uh, so, if you consider a simple uh, 4D Einstein Maxwell theory, fine. So, it's like a real example. Up to now, we are in a schematic. So, it's a real example. So, we start with a very simple Einstein Maxwell theory in four dimension. So, this is how my uh, action, of course. Uh, uh, in the Euclidean signature looks like. So this is my curvature related to G mu nu. And uh, the G mu nu bar and a mu bar, so the, my field contents are, are a metric and a vector field. It's Einstein Maxwell theory. Right? So I have a metric and, and, a, uh, and a vector field. And then um, this is my background. Background, uh, this is a classical solution to Einstein equation. So I wrote down its equation of motion. So for this Einstein Maxwell theory in four dimension, you can see that if you will take the trace of the first equation, uh, that gives me the um, Ricci scalars to be zero. So in all my calculations, it, it gives me a lot of simplification that my R equal to zero. Right? But that is just simple, simple in, in, in four dimension in, in, the, in this particular case. So I'm, I'm using the, R equal to zero. So the equation motion you will need uh, at many places to write uh, the final answer in terms of the duality invariant terms. So, and uh, uh, if you want to look for the black hole solutions, so the general solutions of the electromagnetic theory are the core Neumann family of black holes. So uh, it's like uh, I will write it for in general for the core Neumann. You substitute uh, appropriately the angular momentum and the charge. You switch up any of the parameters. Then you can reproduce the core, Rajanostom, and Schwarzschild results basically. 
and we computed this logarithmic corrections for this extremal black holes in in this electromagnetic uh, just simple einstein maxwell theory uh, in 2012 and so that was the work by from with uh, professor sen and uh, santini in 2012 that we con computed the logarithmic entropy corrections for extremal black holes for extremal corner man family of black holes in this simple einstein maxwell theory in the current work we basically generalize or extend our work or the the black hole solutions by coupling to the additional fields so in general you can couple uh, many vectors or dirac fields or rita swinger field or scalar field to this theory right so that i called by a uh, generalized einstein maxwell theory right? it's the simple four dimensional maxwell theory the pure relo you will say einstein maxwell plus it can it is uh, it, it is uh, coupled to different scalars vectors uh, or some dirac fields or some rita swinger field fine so the action i wrote it is just considering one one fields you can do it for any number so we have a result for that fine however as you can see that the coupling is minimal like they only couple to through the determinant of g to the background so there is no interaction right so that's why we call it as minimally coupled einstein maxwell theory and this theory will only admit the solutions of the pure einstein maxwell theory if you have some non minimal coupling some interaction then that can admit different kind of solutions i like scalarized solution or some dilatonic black holes so that can admit different kind of solutions however our minimally coupled uh, generalized einstein maxwell theory it can only admit the solutions of the pure einstein uh, maxwell theory fine right? you don't have any extra solution so we have just the conman family of solutions but it can be coupled some extra fields so we calculated the logarithmic entropy corrections for the extremal and non extremal black holes of in this generalized theory fine so i'll i'll directly go to the to the results um actually i put i, I kept the computation if someone is interested to <laughs> to see how uh, yeah so this is the so so in case uh, you want to see that uh, you want to couple more number of fields so in general you can uh, you can write a theory with uh, n uh, em number of uh, einstein maxwell sector like uh, the metric and the vector field i called it as pure einstein maxwell then uh, you can couple it to n zero number of scalars n one number of vectors n half number of uh, a number of um, dirac fields and three up number of uh, um, rita swinger field and uh, our paper gives you the result for for all of them so you can write down uh, you can apply it uh, to any black hole that that uh, you want to write right fine switch down uh, put your numbers and uh, i give you the a4 for all of them so we have computed the conman um, the log corrections to the conman uh, black holes and you can uh, uh, calculate the rajanostrom black hole just by putting the um, uh, changing the black on um, black hole parameters like uh, if you just keep the charge and the angular put angular momentum at zero then you can reproduce the results for rajanostrom if you put um, Uh, angular momentum to zero and uh, sorry charge zero and non zero angular momentum you can reproduce the core black hole and put both the parameters zero you can uh, in the non extremal limit you can uh, write down the schwarzschild results also so this is our uh, final result for the extreme ext extremal core neumann black holes in a four dimensional generalized minimally coupled uh, einstein maxwell theory so Uh, as you said the uh, the core neumann corrections are geometric so so this is this is coming back to my beginning point that uh, there is no way to say that uh, up to now 
uh, it's, it's only the result that, that I can say that uh, the Kohn Neumann corrections, uh, the corrections for the Kohn Neumann black hole, as you can see, that this B prime B, they are related to the black hole parameters. Fine. So the corrections are, uh, are in terms of the black hole parameters. So they are geometric. However, uh, for the core black hole, as you can see, that uh, they are independent of the of the of, of any kind of geometric parameter. So they are fully universal. Even if for the Rajanostrom, they don't depend on the black hole parameter. So they are fully universal. Fine. So it's just our uh, interpretation of our result or observations on our result. We don't have a way to say that if it will be a geometric or non-geometric. So this is for the extremals. If you compute for the non-extremal, uh, you will see that um, uh, like uh, like the all the charged black hole corrections. Fine. Let it be Korn Neumann or um, Korn Neumann or Rajanostrom. They are geometric. However, uh, the core and uh, core and uh, and Schwarzschild they are non-geometric. Fine. So it's different for uh, for different um, uh, black holes. Uh, so we don't have a way to say that if it will the prefactor will be will be depending on the black hole parameters or or it will be fully universal. So I would like to uh, conclude with the main points of our uh, work. So we computed the heat kernel coefficients, uh, like the. Um, Although we use uh, only the A4 coefficient for computing the uh, um, logarithmic correction, uh, we have also given the uh, results for uh, the initial two, A0 and A2. You can go ahead and compute A6, but uh, the computation is much more hectic. So the general coefficient, uh, like um, uh, our aim is like this A0 and A2, sometimes they are useful for starting the one loop divergence and uh, anomalies of uh, various asymptotics of the effective action. That's why we have given the results for A A0 and A2. And um, we showed that how A4 can be used to, to, uh, to calculate the uh, logarithmic corrections both for extremal and non-extremal black holes. And uh, uh, for our theory, like uh, the generalized uh, einstein maxwell theory, we computed the logarithmic correction. Uh, our results, uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, these are on macroscopic side. And uh, so, so this, this gives a, puts a strong constraint on any attempt at a microscopic explanation of the entropy of these black holes. So if anyone is trying to do a microscopic computation uh, for a generalized uh, Einstein-Maxwell uh, theory or these uh, Kahneman family of black holes in this theory, then um, they should give uh, a successful comparison to our uh, result. Yeah, so I will try to uh, stop here and, uh, yeah. and thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for kind uh, presentation. Yeah, let, let's thank speaker. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. you so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I would we... I would just have a small question. Uh, can yeah, I of ask course. now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of course. So, so uh, I... uh, in this uh, zero mode uh, formula that you had shown, I think by Larson and Sen. Uh huh. Okay, so, so it seems. Um, uh, see, uh, the formula is given by Larson, and okay. uh, what Larson at all claims that uh, their formula. I'm going to that formula basically. So um, that formula, um, it's not by Sen and Larson. It's two different groups, and uh, basically uh, Sen at all for their. Uh, so they have done a uh, lots of computation for this. Um, logarithmic correction for different kind of black holes in, in a higher supersymmetry, like n equal to four, n equal to eight, and uh, n equal to two, uh, many of them. So um, uh, this formula is basically given by Larsen et al. And he claims that uh, this formula reproduces all the results of Sen et al. Okay, okay. Now my question is, it, I mean, it doesn't seem to change for, uh, for a charged black hole. Uh, is there any parameter that depends on the charge of the black hole? 
say for mm -hmm. example do, do i get it no get you see now this is this is kind of a zero mode data so so if i will just uh, uh, stop thinking of the black holes it's it's, it's a kind of isometric directions fine so these are the zero modes so right. yeah uh, so that's why it does not depend on the charge if you switch on the charge or not the charge it's, it's like a uh, geometric parameter so it does not depend on this yeah okay 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 Thank you. So is it also, yeah, we, we're taking into account this beta value. Uh, this, this formula. Uh, the, uh, we could not hear you actually. I cannot hear uh, you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Let yeah. me repeat. So this yeah, zero mode formula, I mean, this C zero mode formula, mm -hmm. so is it, uh, after taking uh, into account the number of zero mode as well as the value of beta. Yeah, the number of zero mode and the value of beta. Uh, okay, I see. Yeah. We have a question. Uh, for N Suzy, you said four for PPS black holes and zero for other Suzy black holes. Um, what do you mean this? You mean the fully supersymmetry black holes or? Uh -huh. Yes, uh, this will be zero for, uh, for okay, more likely it's, it's zero for all the non supersymmetric ones because this uh, method is applicable for uh, supersymmetric and uh, means like for all supersymmetric and non supersymmetric black holes. So for the non-supersymmetric, it will be zero, uh, like uh, for the quarter BPS also. So uh, it's like for, for, for the BPS black holes only, it will be four and, uh, and zero is like otherwise, for any other condition, it will be zero. So the regardless of the preserved supersymmetry, the supersymmetric black hole have only four for the n Suji, right? Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, sorry, so uh, half BPS black hole, quarter BPS black hole, all have four? Uh, okay, so it's like, um, uh, I think for the quarter BPS, it will not to work. Um, and so when we said it is BPS, it's like preserving half of the supersymmetry. So half BPS is like, uh, or how do you describe it? Uh, like BPS solutions are like uh, preserving some amount of supersymmetry. That's what you say. Yes. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, for all of them, it's four. And uh, for non-supersymmetric, it will be it will be zero. Yeah, as I said, it's an empirical formula. It's like it has matched to all, all of them and they give a uh, successful answer, but, uh, but, but you can compute it. So uh, different uh, people and the different, uh, like in the literature, you can see that uh, there is a well-established computation for this zero mode data. Like Sen at all, they computed from the first principle, computing what are the fields are there and and uh, computing all the degrees of freedom. So they computed from the uh, from the first principle itself for each of the theory. So yeah, let me ask one thing. Uh... Another thing. So uh, you separately computed extremal case and non-extremal case. Yes. Uh, for non-extremal case, you use the full geometry. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you take a, a extremal limit from this uh, result of non-extremal case so, such that can you yeah. obtain the result no, I, of your case? Yeah. I think you can do it because 
anything is, is you are doing it uh, over a full geometry but then you are there you are doing it on, over the integration over in over the near horizon only mm -hmm. Fine. So you cannot uh, here. You are doing the integration over the full geometry. So yes. just by putting the uh, extremal, I have not tried, but mm -hmm. um, it's it's uh, should you go if you put the extremality condition like uh, the temperature gets zero. Can you go back to the near horizon geometry from the full geometry? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's how it. I think I do do we do it in the past principle, no? We start with the full geometry, then uh, yeah. Uh, but I have not checked that. That if you can go back to the extremal results or uh, not. Yeah, because here you do a, a integration over the near horizon, and you substitute that near horizon geometry. Near horizon, uh, like the extremal limit, are going to RH. Then, uh, okay, I, 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 I don't know if you can go or, uh, yeah, go back or not. Yeah, okay, yeah, fine, mm -hmm. thanks. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah, you, you, you showed uh, several ways of computing this coefficient, uh, like yeah. uh, group theory and quasi-normal modulus. But... Mm -hmm. Finally, you use some partially of key corners. What, what, uh, yeah, something, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, oh, yeah. so, what, what's yeah. the, yeah, is there a name of, of the of the method that you are using? This one is, uh, okay, so this expansion is passed on by silly do it. So, so, so this method is called a silly do it expansion. Okay, just that. Okay. So, yeah. So because it is uh, uh, in the in the uh, in the work by um, Basilevic, uh, it is written that. Uh, okay, so the expansion is again general. The way you compute this coefficient is, has different methods. Fine. So uh, we use uh, so this I will say is the Basilevic's method because uh, okay. Basilevic has. Uh, given these formulas. So he has basically uh, calculated for each of the kinetic operators, uh, do this computation and wrote down the, the formula for A4 in terms of these uh, um, different matrices. So, and, and, and as I said that I'm just, we are just adopting the one for the, for the theory without a boundary. So Basilevic has both uh, like the, how the formula will look like uh, if you have a boundary theory. So it's a manual, uh, it's a long paper. So you can, uh, so he has included for all different cases. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, actually yeah, time is already up, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we need to first uh, thank, yeah, close this uh, session by thanking the organizer again. Yeah. Thank you. Then, yeah, yeah. And seminar, for, yeah, official seminar time is over. So yeah, we can have freely just a uh, discussion if we, have, if we have any question. So yeah. Uh, So I yeah, so uh, I have uh, just a question. Yes. Yeah. So basically, when you write this, uh, the the no, you are using this notation capital lambda, right, for the kinetic mm. op Operator, operators yeah. between mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I, I'm just curious. Like I can do this entire thing uh, in a 